the effects of the menopause. When our periods stop due to our ovaries stopping working or our ovaries being removed or damaged um, or affected by treatments, the main effect is being low on oestrogen. And being low on oestrogen can then lead to various symptoms which are divided into early consequences or symptoms, intermediate and later health effects. Women are very, very different and are all affected very differently. And while the same process applies to all women in that we all become low in oestrogen at some point, how that affects us and the impact that has, that has on us, our families, our relationships, our work, is hugely variable between women. And sometimes even within each woman, the effect varies from month to month and from year to year. So while we have traditionally looked at the menopause as period stopping and one point in time, what is more important is to look at a staging of the effects of the menopause or more accurately the effects of being low in oestrogen. So if we think about the early effects first of all, so these are the symptoms that many many women are aware of and what we term as vasomotor symptoms, that's quite a technical name, but it refers to the symptoms such as flushes and sweats. And the reason that we have these, or many women experience these, is due to the low level of oestrogen having an effect on the thermostat. The thermostat is an area in the brain that controls our body temperature. And basically it can go a little bit wonky and that means our brain thinks our body's overheating when it's not really. And this leads to opening up of little blood vessels which causes the flush and also switching on of the sweat glands and therefore sweating and both of these are trying to get rid of heat. So the flushes and sweats affect many, many women, but the severity and the duration again is very varied and women are affected by this very individually. The early symptoms also can include disturbed sleep and sometimes joint aches. Also mood changes are really, really common and often not recognized as being part of this hormonal transition. When we come on to how long will these symptoms go on for, the average duration is thought to be probably around about four or five years, something like that. But some women will not have these early symptoms for that length of time and some women will go on having these early symptoms for a long, long time, I, even into the 70s and 80s. So while early refers to when they start, that's early in this phase of our bodies changing, then they don't just last for a short amount of time, they can last for a long time. And if we come, when we come to talk about treatments for these symptoms, we cannot predict how long treatments will be needed because we cannot predict how long these symptoms will go on for. There's often other aspects of our life that affect how the symptoms affect us. So what are the stresses we're going on, what our diet and lifestyle is like, and all this put into the melting pot makes this a very difficult, confusing time for many women. And the key message time and time again is that we want to support women to get the right information so they can choose what to do about these symptoms if they affect them in a troublesome way. The intermediate effects of being low in oestrogen often start a few years after the periods have stopped and or a few years after the menopause and these are symptoms that affect the vagina and the bladder and they're often known as urogenital symptoms. Regarding the vagina we know the the lining of the vagina can become quite thin, fragile and dry with the lack of oestrogen. The circulation isn't as good, the response isn't as good and this can cause discomfort in the form of dryness, irritation, discomfort during sex and can have an effect on our interest in sex and relationships. This is a really, really common symptom that is hugely underreported and undertreated. We think it may be underreported partly because women often don't associate these symptoms with the lack of oestrogen and with the menopause, but also women find it really embarrassing to talk about these symptoms. The bladder can also be affected in this intermediate stage and that can lead to changes in how often we pass urine, this urgency to need to pass urine, sometimes having to get up through the night to pass urine and also increased risk of urinary tract infections. While we've explained that the early onset symptoms can last a long time in some women, but they will resolve in many women at some stage, the, the symptoms of the vagina and bladder tend to continue indefinitely. So if we are thinking about treatments for the vagina and bladder, we need to think about long-term treatments. Finally, we know that the lack of oestrogen 
can have later health effects on the heart health, on bone health and also on the brain health. And particularly for the women who lose their oestrogen at a younger age than normal, we know can have significantly increased risks of these later health problems. So when we're looking at treatments, it's important to understand the role of hormone therapy, but also to understand what we can change in our diet and lifestyle, particularly, for example, related to smoking. Um, stopping smoking is really good for our heart health and for our bone health. Thinking about our diet and our exercise, maintaining a good weight is really important for our heart health. Um, and also thinking about our diet and exercise is also really good for our heart health and our bone health. So it is really important to have a better awareness of these later consequences of being low in oestrogen and having a good understanding of what we can do about it to invest in our later health.